It's Elizabeth from Elvis Astrology at ElvisAstrology.com. So this is your uh, extended video. I pick some aspect of astrology that I want to speak about. And in this one, I'm going to be speaking about the Mercury retrograde, um, ostensibly in Scorpio, although it does go direct at 25 degrees of uh, Libra. So, but it's mainly in Scorpio. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. And the reason that I picked this as important First of all, it's happening mostly in October, and October is a very important month in 2020. Um, but mainly because we had a Venus retrograde here um, back in 2018, towards the end of 2018. I'll cover the dates and the degrees in that in a minute. So this is the rationale of me wanting to cover it. And basically what I think this is doing is it's, this Venus retrograde that we had in 2018 may have left some of us um, with questions still. There may not have been resolution. And I think this Mercury retrograde, right, brings a message. And I think Mercury will make clear Venus's intentions um, that was at that uh, Venus retrograde in 2018. So, when we look at the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, um, we look, we're looking at 11 degrees Scorpio 40 minutes, and that's on the 14th of October 2020 and it goes direct at 25 degrees of Libra on the 3rd of November. Notably, we will have um, Mars going direct the day before on the 2nd of November, and I think that is significant. Why do I think that's significant? Mars is energy, and it's going now direct. It's giving positive forward-moving energy to this Mercury retrograde the next day that's going direct. And so I think this is gonna be a positive resolution for some people with regards to some kind of, um, I don't want to get morbid and things like that, but Scorpio is a very deep, sensual, sexual, psychological sign. So it may have been back in late 2018 that some of us went through uh, some very deep, um, troubling times, maybe even in our love life. But at the very least, it would have been around power and trust. So, um, not to have a spoiler alert on my own video, but the bottom line with this whole Mercury retrograde in Scorpio is really going to be about us taking back our power. Taking back our power in our head, our thoughts, and not going to the media around us for the answers. Um, our words, right? Um, and the way we speak to others, the way we write things, that's what Mercury is all about, right? Any kind of communication, the way we communicate with people. Um, but it's about power and trust, this Mercury retrograde, and all these types of issues will be brought up at the Mercury retrograde. Like I said, there's a tie back to the Venus uh, retrograde at the end of 2018. Okay. So, when we look at any kind of retrograde, uh, we ask ourselves, okay, what is the ruler of that? So we say, well, what is the ruler of Scorpio? The modern ruler of Scorpio is Pluto. And Pluto, what does Pluto like to do? It purifies. Now, if you're utilizing that whole Pluto, which is power as well, wrongly, it can backfire eventually. So you may think you have the upper hand, and some of this may be going on, especially in the collective. Um, anything to do with Scorpio, you want to be very careful about not doing anything underhanded or um, you know, using things like magic and things like that for wrong uh, reasons. Be very careful because that bounces back on you and it could happen at this Mercury retrograde for you. So be very careful. Um, but that's the negative side of it. Um, Pluto likes to purify. It likes to transform. So this is transforming not only the way you think and the way you speak and communicate with others, but it's also giving a helping hand to that past Venus retrograde where maybe there wasn't a real resolution. Now this resolution would have revolved around Venus things like our love life potentially, our value system, um, our money to some extent too, all those three things 
uh, are kind of owned by Venus. Even investments, um, that could be tied in with the Scorpio sort of filter on the uh, Venus. So when we look at a Pluto type person, kind of with this Mercury retrograde, this person can be very magnetic. And so when you add in Mercury, messenger, communicating, this is a person that can speak magnetically. What kind of person is that? Well, it could be a modern day guru. Uh, someone that we view as a guru could actually have a deeper, darker side. And certainly we've seen these things in the press. Um, you know, someone who seems to just be magnetic and people just fall all over them. Comes out to be that there's some, some deep things there that aren't good. So I would say over this Mercury retrograde period, um, you, should, you should be cautioned um, that you know, there's going to be a revealing of some things here, maybe for more than one guru type thing. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a spiritual guru either. It just could be a guru in many aspects of life. Now Mercury uh, rules the nervous system very much like Uranus does. Uranus is kind of the higher octave of uh, Mercury. But it also rules the nervous system, as it's through the nerves and impulses, uh, our organs work, right? Now, Scorpio, because that's the filter here, um, is our sexual organs, and to some extent, the brain, um, but really from a psychological standpoint. So now we're talking about Mercury delving into the depths of our minds, right? And sometimes that's scary for some of us would be an excellent time to go or co to continue any kind of therapy, especially uh, psychological therapy, where you look to someone to help untangle some of your psychological selves. We all need it at some point in our life. Some of us need it more than once. Um, I've certainly had therapy different times and it's just been wonderful for me to help me understand my inner workings, which then reflect how I, I act uh, outwardly to other people. Don't be shy to do that, should you think you do need it. Maybe you don't. Okay, let's just look at some of the mythology around Mercury. Now Mercury was the only entity that could enter the underworld, Hades, uh, Pluto's realm, uh, and come out unscathed. So if we think about the underworld too, there should be, could be some grief issues surrounding this Mercury retrograde as well. But resolution of grief can be very, very liberating, right? So look at that in a positive standpoint. Now, I didn't mention that the ancient ruler of um, Scorpio was Mars, and that's why it's so important for us to be looking at the Mars retrograde, which is ongoing full force in October. Now you're getting the picture of why October is so important. Now there's other things too. There's a, um, a Libra moon that comes up that's important. Um, and a few other things that certainly I've covered in my Mars retrograde video. I'll put the link to that below should you want to look at it. I did that in depth. I'm trying to keep to the, um, the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio through this video, but you'll hear me mention a bit about uh, Mars retrograde as well because it's so intimately tied in as a ruler of Scorpio. That's where this Mercury retrograde mainly takes place. Alright, so when we look at some of the myths and things that are surrounding Mercury, the Latin word Merces uh, is derived from the word Mercury and means merchandise. So this really then brings us to the idea of Mercury being the patron of merchants and small business, right? Mercury can also be a trickster and he also can be very clever. He was the god's messenger. In particular, he was Jupiter's messenger more than anything else. Um, but as I mentioned, he was the only entity that can go up to the top in the heavens where the gods would come down to earth and then go down into the underworld unscathed. So there's many myths derived from the Greek uh, mythology. Um, Mercury also uh, was honored in other um, societies like Thoth 
uh, in Egypt. I'm not going to go into all that, but it's interesting how he wasn't alone in terms of being Roman or Greek uh, dominated or worshipped, right? So when, when we look at sort of evolutionary astrology, which is part of what I actually um, follow, Mercury is to guide us across our light and dark shadow sides of ourselves. So this is where we get kind of that tie-in of Mercury being helpful, especially in Scorpio here, um, to go into our psychological selves as well, because Mercury assists us with it. It's been bestowed the powers to do that, to go into that dark place and then take us back up into the light. So just use that sort of analogy to understand what you may be going through uh, most of October as well. So he also rescued Persephone from Hades, and of course that's a whole other myth uh, with Demeter, who was the ruler of crops and uh, food growing, and where she decided that because she couldn't get her daughter back permanently, that she would have things like winter where there would be no crops. Uh, but that's a whole other myth that I'm not going to go into, but it's interesting that he rescued her from Hades or the underworld. Now, baby Hermes started off by stealing cattle from his half-brother Apollo. And Zeus, his father, was so impressed <laughs> with, with Mercury or Hermes' story. Um, and the story goes that how could I possibly, as a baby, uh, steal your cattle? But the clever side of Hermes or Mercury had um, got these cattle to, you know, walk backwards so they couldn't figure out uh, what direction the cattle were being taken in. And of course Hermes uh, had got these special um, sandals made um, that made his footprints invisible. All very clever stuff, right? Um, anyway, in the end the two made up and uh, everything was fine in the end. But it did kind of confer this um, messenger type um, power that uh, Hermes and Mercury had. Now he was also given um, sort of a, a magical staff that was a golden staff and the caduceus is around it as well. Hermes uh, has a divinity around magic which grants him invisibility. So this helps you understand how he could then go into the underworld unscathed because Hades has a lot of sort of monsters and everything, you know, guarding everything. Um, there's something called the Emerald Tablet, and I won't go into all the ins and outs of that. There's other people like Gary Caton uh, who's uh, talked a lot about this, um, as well as Gemini Brett. But the Emerald Tablet was from the Hellenistic time, and it refers to um, this Mercury or being uh, thrice anointed. So he was anointed in three things. One was alchemy, that's the magic part of it. Two was astrology, that I thought that was interesting, and then three was thurgy. Um, Mercury as a planet is never uh, more than 28 degrees from the sun, so many of us have our astrological charts with both the Sun and Mercury in the same sign. Now you know why. Now, the Sun and Mercury cycle begins at the inferior conjunction of the Sun. And this is when Mercury is going retrograde. When Mercury goes retrograde, or any planet goes retrograde, it means that it's close to the Earth. Mercury rules two signs, Gemini and uh, Virgo. So generally speaking, uh, Geminis and Virgos will be affected by most Mercury retrogrades. And if we look at a few other signs in terms of more uh, challenging aspects, this Mercury retrograde will be opposed Taurus, and of course we have Uranus and Taurus right now. Um, it will square also Aquarius and square Leo. And it will uh, have a, a quincunx or in conjunct 
to where Mars is, and that's Aries. So just bear that in mind as we go through this video. I am going to cover your ascendance uh, at the end of this video, um, and I'm mainly going to cover it from the standpoint of Mercury being in Scorpio, not Mercury being in Libra. But you can always look at these degrees that I've given you in your own chart and do your own figuring out for yourself. I'm just doing a general one right now. Okay, I think I've given you enough of a background um, that should, should help you. So we start off with this Mercury retrograde at 11 degrees Scorpio, 40 minutes on the 14th of October, 2020. And Mars will be retrograde at that time. I've mentioned that issues of power and trust will be very much at the forefront. And if we think about where the ru other ruler, um, Pluto, is, it's in Capricorn. And of course, that whole sign of Capricorn has been pounded in terms of really truly asking for transforming of our structures, transforming of the old into something new. Um, so this is a very significant time um, for power and trust issues. Mm -hmm. But on the positive side of it, of this, it's us taking our power back again, right? And it's us accepting our shadow sides and looking at that shadow side and maybe even finding some good in the shadow side or seeing where that shadow side, conversely, has really been leading us around by the nose and by recognizing that uh, the influence of the shadow side can help us deal more in the real world. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, if we look at the, I'm just going to give you some dates here that may be uh, significant for you to look at. We've got the retrograde stopping in Mercury um, at 25 degrees of Libra on the 3rd of November 2020. Now it turns out that we also had this Venus uh, go direct also at 25 degrees of Libra on the 16th of November, November 2018. Okay, so we now know that 25 degrees is going to be some kind of important message um, to us for this Mercury retrograde. So let's look at the Sabian symbol. Now, we always round up um, when we come to Sabian symbols. So unless we have it at 25 degrees, zero, zero minutes, we have to round up to 26 degrees. Some astrologers don't seem to know that, but it does clearly spell it out in the Sabian symbol books. But it's always interesting to hear about all the symbols and what the meanings are. So this is more than just 25 degrees. It's 25 degrees and some minutes. So we then look at the Sabian symbol, which is 26 degrees of Libra. And this is an eagle and large white dove change into each other. So this is kind of a yin-yang interplay. It's our will and love working for a single purpose. And I think that that's very interesting that at the end of this Mercury retrograde, as well as the end of the Venus retrograde in 2018, it's the same Sabian symbol. So really this is referring to um, the the more, um, I guess, aggressive and assertive uh, eagle turning into this peaceful, um, compassionate white dove. And I see this as, I mean, the eagle, the bald eagle represents the USA. And I can't see how this can play out at this point in time, and I'm doing this early August 2020, but this really does um, speak to, you know, something like an eagle that hunts for prey, turning into something more peace-loving. So at the end of this Mercury retrograde, that's what that's saying. Out of this difficulty, we will get some peace. And I think that's beautiful, right? Okay, on the 18th of November, so this is well and truly after the uh, the retrograde in Mercury as well as the one in Mars for that matter finishes, we have Venus 
will be at 25 degrees of Libra. So I talked about in other videos how the, uh, the, the personal planets can activate um, another transit. So this here, the 18th of November, I'm telling you, we have Venus activating that direct motion of both those things, the Mercury retrograde in 2020 and the Venus retrograde in 2018. So this may be a significant time, and it will pertain to the feminine. It'll pertain to our value systems. Um, it'll pertain to how society, because it's in Libra, how society views um, the feminine principle. And I suspect that because Libra also speaks about laws, that there may be some laws enacted, maybe even worldwide laws come into effect to protect the feminine. Now remember, the feminine itself is found in males and females. But taking it a step closer to the reality, this could be protection for females in particular at this time. On the 22nd to the 24th of November, we have Mars now direct opposing the um, 25 degrees of Libra as well. So here it's just following. So there may be on the 18th of November um, a proposal put forward for new laws. And then on the 22nd to 24th, that law is processed and put into action. Now there may be some resistance, maybe even from the male principle, um, masculine principle, because it's Mars that's opposed to this Mercury direct in Scorpio degree point of 25 Libra. Mm -hmm. Or it could be someone who just lays down the law, literally. Mm -hmm. Now this could also be a time period, although according to the schedule, Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell is not due, I don't think, to have her trial till next year. But this could be some kind of pre-thing of some sort uh, in terms of like contextualizing this into what's happening right now in our real world that we know about. Um, yeah, there could be some aggression with regards to this stuff coming out that she's dealt with. Um, and it may be more underworld and um, power driven than we really realize. Um, anyway, we'll have to see how that comes out there. We have uh, late December, in particular the 27th, 28th of December, we have Mars direct in Aries, actually it's at 25 degrees, Aries will be opposite that Mercury retrograde direct point of 25 Libra. So again, it's an activation. So there's a, a series of things that are going to happen as a result of this Mars retrograde um, that are going to be quite dramatic. I mean, Mars Direct is going to be pushing this through and saying we've got to do this and it somehow is connected with society and connected with the law. Um, so I think that's good. It's all good news. Um, let's see here. We have on the 29th of Jan next year, um, we have at 11 degrees of Capricorn we have our next Venus retrograde going uh, direct at that time. Um, actually, that's at 2022. So this is covering, what I'm covering next is just to tell you, well, when is this next Venus retrograde going to happen? And the next Venus retrograde that's going to happen is on the 19th of December, 2021. And it'll be at 26 degrees of Capricorn. And we know that's also an important degree point, right? It'll go direct, as I just mentioned, on the 29th of Jan, 2022 at 11 degrees of uh, Capricorn. So Capricorn energy will be up in 2021, 2022 in terms of the Venus retrograde. Okay, I think I've kind of covered everything with regards to this whole Mercury retrograde, um, but I would really, um, you know, I would take your time going through and picking through psychological issues I wouldn't be jumping into a lot of stuff and I would be very kind to myself. And make sure you can trust the people that you are confiding in. That's one thing I would say as well with the Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. 
Um, it doesn't mean, you know, get all bent out of shape about things, but um, do, do be um, circumspect with regards to who you trust and who you give your power to. And be very conscious of giving your power away and be equally conscious of using this time period to take your power back. Okay? All right. Let's go on to just a brief overview for each of the signs and um, I will cover this Mercury retrograde but being in Scorpio itself. So that's how I'm reading this. I'm reading whole house signs and I'm reading it as your ascendant um, but you could certainly read this as your sun sign too. I think when you start adding in Moon, Mercury, Mars and all those things I know a lot of astrologers do that and that's their decision. I just find that it's going to be very confusing for an individual to figure things out and I think it's better to keep it simple and it doesn't make it less important. That's my view. Long term, that's what I've seen uh, come out. So use your ascendant um, and or use your sun sign. They're both equally important. I'm going to start with Scorpio because that's basically where this Mercury retrograde uh, was or is. And that's in your first house. So this is going to be a significant time for you, but this is like a second I feel this is maybe even a second chance to resolve issues. Because you had that Venus retrograde here in your first house in 2018 and now you've got this um, Mercury resolution diplomat trying to make sense of what that was and bringing a resolution. I really feel there'll be some resolution. It may be to do with a female. Um, it may be to do with your love. It may be that since the end of 2018 you've really revamped your value system and this is just bringing you full circle and making you realize how important it was to do that work at that time. Um, but you know, you're going to be hit hard with this Scorpio, so you know, be kind to yourself. And you also actually have, um, I'm pretty sure it's a new moon, yes it's a new moon in Scorpio that's happening um, in I believe November, I'm not sure the exact date. So you've got November to look at a new start, Scorpio, right? So get through this, and you in particular are going to be at the forefront of taking your power back and being using care and circumspect with who you trust. And equally, being trustworthy yourself, right? Maybe those are issues you have to work on. Good luck, Scorpio. Okay, so we look at Sagittarius. This is your 12th house. Now, this could be a little shady, because 12th house can be sort of hidden enemies and maybe a hidden enemy is going to come out for you. Um, maybe a hidden enemy that you thought was a friend. Um, but this could also be a time when you delve deeply into things like um, the deeper, darker sides of yourself um, and somehow connect those with spirituality. Um, this could be a time where you do um, you know, you almost, I get this feeling of calling in the spirits. I, I really get that because Mercury is like, you know, uh, language and um, uh, communication. I, I get that strongly for you, Sagittarius, calling in the spirits. So this might be a good time um, to do some kind of meditating and uh, working through some of your deeper, darker issues. Um, spirituality will certainly help you at this time. So what does that mean when I say spirituality? Uh, find a good practice of meditation that helps you. And it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm not saying that long meditations aren't useful to people, but I've always come to the standpoint of I want you to do this regularly. Find something that works for you. And it could be something as simple as you listening to some peaceful sounds on a YouTube. You do have some great stuff for um, just peacing out. Um, you know, if you like rain, continuous rain, sometimes they have hours of rain um, and uh, beautiful sort of scenes in that. They're actually really relaxing. I watch them sometimes too. Um, but certainly look uh, to resolving maybe some real inner issues uh, that have maybe hung around. Again, maybe issues with trust and power because you too um, are, are having to deal with that as well in addition to Scorpio. When we look at Capricorn, I mean, you already got kind of a loaded house there, right, with dealing with Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. Um, but what's positive about this Capricorn? 
uh, is that it is in your 11th house. And the 11th house, at its nicest level and positive, is your hopes and wishes. Um, it's also gaining money through your own business. Um, but it's your friends and uh, your groups that you hang out with. Now, it's sextiles. So this Mercury retrograde will be mostly sextiling those big power planets in your sign. And so this could also involve you having some kind of release with regards to how you communicate. You may be putting together some powerful communication, maybe communication tools for the collective to use, or you transforming this whole uh, way you communicate. Um, I got that kind of a strong thing here because it's a sextile that provides you some opportunities to do this. And maybe to even be um, a speaker representative for um, for groups and maybe for friends. Maybe you'll become this uh, trumpet and voice for those that don't have a voice. Right? It's a positive way for you to use that. But, you know, you've got those heavy duty planets in there that are asking you to transform. This Mercury retrograde may actually facilitate that through some kind of changing of your thoughts, changing the way you speak, and then of course then how you communicate. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Aquarius is your 10th house. And you know, the 10th house is mainly to do with your career. It's also your goals that you set for yourself in how you get to develop your career. So here we have you maybe um, deciding to rethink, right? So Mercury retrogrades also about our thoughts. So this may be you having second thoughts about the career or even the goals that you've been setting yourself. And you may, may make some decisions that um, put you on a new path with regards to your career. Um, but it will revolve around issues of power and control. Maybe you've got presently right now you've been somehow operating with this power-hungry um, institution, or maybe specifically a boss or manager, um, where you can't trust them. And this gets you to release that right at the end of that, so the beginning of November. Releasing that and making a decision in your thought processes to move on to, from that, that maybe this was kind of holding you in, that psychologically you weren't realizing that um, you were uh, somehow working with those energies, but they were really negative for you. It can also have you um, rising to some, um, you know, position of power where people have to trust you. Please ensure that people uh, can respect you with regards to your power, that you use it wisely, and that people can trust you. Um, okay. For Pisces, it is your ninth house. Now Pisces, you also have Neptune uh, that's in your sign as well, exerting kind of a big sort of uh, energy. And it forms a trine, and it'll form a trine exactly at some point uh, in October with this Mercury retrograde. But I see that as a positive thing. This is favorable energy when we talk about trines. So this Mercury retrograde will form a trine to your sign, but also to the ruler of your sign, which is in your sign, Pisces, Neptune. And so this could be bringing you to very high levels of spiritual thought. Now, the ninth house is highlighted here with regards to where this Mercury retrograde in Scorpio resides for you. So ninth house is ruled by Jupiter. It's higher levels of thinking, right? And then also higher levels of education, but it's also publishing too. Um, because Mercury is speaking and writing and thinking, perhaps you've gotten a book or some kind of publication to the point uh, of where you could actually get it published. And during this Mercury retrograde, you're going through the process of working with people in power to get your publication actually processed. Um, but it could also be, depending how old you are and your inclination, 
could have you going to higher education and dealing with people in power and trusting them um, to process you through that whole, um, you know, getting to be accepted in a university or higher education. It could be that too. Um, but with that trying, this is a real opportunity at this Mercury Retrograde for you to become very spiritualized. And um, it may even have you seeking out somebody like a guru um, that can help facilitate you getting to, um, you know where we talk about getting that higher self, moving into the higher realms of yourself, connecting with source, that sort of thing. And you're a very psychic and intuitive sign, so this augurs <laughs> high levels of uh, intuition. Um, I would definitely be listening to my intuition. I mean, always check in with people you trust if you're not sure about making a big move, um, but you're going to have downloads of big intuition coming your way, and if you're open to it, you could have downloads from the universe and source really putting you in a position of high spiritual levels uh, in relation to the world, maybe making you a guru. All right, for Aries, it's your eighth house. Now remember, you've got Mars retrograde all of October happening too. And of course, generally speaking, this Mars retrograde uh, will be you know, squaring uh, the Scorpio retrograde of Mercury. Let's just talk about the eighth house. So you've got the eighth house involved here. And this is, I always view the eighth house as a couple things. Mainly it's a psychological house. And certainly Mercury is going to be digging into your psychological self and bringing stuff to the surface to help you understand how you perform in the outer world with other people. That's the general idea here. So it's not to be scary or to say, oh, I don't want to look at that. This is to facilitate and help you so that whatever you've got going on side here um, is then, you know, brought to the outside. Not only is it brought to the outside, you're magnetizing the universe to bring you that thing back, right? It's kind of like that projection thing. Um, in fact, you might be doing some projection with the Mars retrograde there, assisting all this, um, where you push it onto other people. But I would suggest um, that you, you really use this time if you are in therapy or you decide you'd like to go for therapy or reading some really good, well-written books uh, in psychology that can help give you insight into your psychological self. This would be really useful. But you know, more on the mundane level, the eighth house really is us um, and our money. But it's shared money, so it's pensions. It's, it's also inheritances. This could be a time when you may be processing an inheritance coming your way. For sure, that could be coming through where you hear about this. Uh, Scorpio, someone dying. Um, but it can also be you uh, having to review your investments and taking the time. This would be a good time to do that, Aries, is to really look at your investments. Where are you invested? Is everything okay there? Can you trust those people in power with your money? Mm -hmm. So there's a couple places that you need to be looking at, Aries. You've got that Mars retrograde kicking up a big storm for you. And I would say especially Aries, um, please, please, um, use compromise whenever you can, negotiate whenever you can. There's nothing wrong with having debates at this time, but know when to walk away from something. Um, you can still have a win-win situation, but you don't have to be on, literally on guard all the time with your sword. Um, so now I'm talking about the Mercury retrograde, but it plays into this. Mercury retrograde at the same time. So this might be kind of an intense time for you and certainly um, you also would benefit from having some kind of meditation practice and at the very least you need to get out into nature as much as you can. This is going to revive you from both the Mercury retrograde standpoint and the Mars retrograde standpoint. It will reduce some of that steam and have it released as ethers. <laughs> Alright, so for Taurus uh, Taurus, you've got Uranus in your sign right now, so this is providing enlightenment on a, as it's going to last for quite a few years for you, so it's providing enlightenment as well as big changes, some of them unexpected in your life. Certainly when Uranus hits your ascendant, 
um, you will be required to make some big changes. Some of these changes will seem like they've come out of the blue and you didn't think they should happen, but you've always got to bear in mind when Uranus hits your ascendant, uh, or your sun for that matter, that these are things you want to change, you've just not felt you've been able to change them. And the universe comes in and says, no problem, I'll change them for you. All right, let's get back to the Mercury retrograde. It's in your seventh house. So this could have you delving into one of two areas with regards to partnership. It can be your business partnerships or it could be your marriage. And it could be that you feel you've had some kind of psychological power game being played on you, maybe for a long time. Um, or you may have dug up or you may dig up this Mercury retrograde through your investigative abilities some trust issues and it can apply to both marriage and business partnerships or either one too but this will probably have this churning up of information that you weren't aware of that have to do with power and trusting but again this is about you taking your power back so at the end of the retrograde you may make a decision um, to leave a partnership because you've got Uranus in your sign as well, um, depending on how it actually the transits work out for you. I can look at your individual chart, by the way, all of you. Uh, that takes a lot of time. I do take a lot of time looking at charts to make sure I've got it as accurate as you, as you can. But you might want to look at the interplay towards of Uranus at this time in October in your chart with regards to this Mercury retrograde, okay? Um, and see how that seems to play out for you. Um, but certainly your seventh house of partnerships is going to be um, up for review um, and there's going to be some investigation going on by you. Yeah. For Gemini, Gemini is your sixth house. And the sixth house is mainly, I think, the house of health. Now, Gemini, you've got the north nodes of the moon here right now, which is very favorable for you. And so this could be a time when you unearth um, some issues that you're having with your health, whether it's the way you eat, the way you work out, or the way you don't work out, just the way you're taking care of yourself. Um, and with these north nodes of the moon of destiny pulsating in the background saying, get on your path, this may be a time, this Mercury retrograde, where you take your power back with regards to how you take care of the temple. You. You, Gemini. Um, it can also be at the same time where you work. And certainly, again, with the north nodes there, all this could be coming up. You may make uh, or have Having the North Nodes here can be very, very fortunate and favorable for you. You could have something, usually something or someone coming in, situation coming in, that gets you on that path that you're supposed to be on in your day-to-day -day work. What could that be? Well, with being Scorpio, Scorpio um, deals with a lot of things that are extremely powerful. This is psychology, uh, it's psychiatry. It's uh, even mining, uh, you know, the minerals of the earth. It is the minerals of the earth. Uh, maybe shamanic stuff of some sort, right? Using crystals to heal people. It's the healing arts, generally speaking. Okay, I'll leave that with you. We've got Cancer next. And um, Cancer, this is your fifth house. So the fifth house refers to a whole bunch of things. But I'm thinking, because you've just gone through having the north nodes in your sign a short while ago, and then the eclipses, and the eclipses in your opposite sign, I think that this may be one of two things. I think you're going to really step forward and be given some opportunities and power. You're going to be given power and the trust of the public to start really being your authentic self as you express your authentic self more and more through the way you communicate and the way you think, um, I really think you're going to be gaining some power and the trust of the public. I'm just getting that as an intuitive hit for you. Um, 
It could be other things too. Certainly we've got children are involved here. Maybe there's some communication going psychologically that you need to address. Either your psychological self or your, your child's psychological self. Maybe you're having some effects psychologically where you need to shift something. Maybe you're going into group therapy with your child. This would be very favorable at this time. Um, it's also games of chance. I'm not saying that you'll win the lottery. Um, but certainly this is a powerful time. And the other thing is, is artistic pursuits. And that's any artistic pursuit. So my feeling is, as you express your authentic self, Cancer, you will gain more power. And in gaining more power, if you use your power correctly, you will gain trust. And when you gain trust, you will then probably also gain money and people trusting you uh, in what you have to say as you express that authentic self. Be authentic. For Leo, it's your fourth house. The fourth house is generally speaking your home, it's your mother, it's your habits, it's where you came from, kind of your family in a way. So this could be a little um, dark and um, very fruitful in the end. It could be a time where you realize how much power maybe your family has had over you and you've trusted them, or even people in your home that have had power over you and you've trusted that. And here with this Scorpio, your investigative side and research side starts discovering that psychologically you're not okay with the way you've been treated. Maybe you've been controlled in some way um, to a lesser or more extent. And you're realizing that in the home, that's not going to work for you anymore. And you want your own autonomy. That's the other word that goes with this power thing and trust, the autonomy. To have your own power. And you need to trust that. That's where this play on words for you is a little different than other signs. You need to trust that autonomy of your own power in your home. Now, you could also have some digging up of things from your past family that come to the surface here that you didn't know about um, that have been somehow holding some kind of power over maybe even your family. Uh, your mother may come to the fore here for some reason. Maybe there was some kind of psychological interplay there that you weren't aware of. Okay. For Virgo, it's your third house. Now, for Virgo, you will have this Mercury retrograde will be sextiling, so that's providing opportunities for you in your third house. Now, the third house is communication, right? So the third house is ruled by Gemini. And so this is communication, it's your neighborhood, it's your siblings. And so this Mercury retrograde could turn out really well for you, where you um, start communicating in a more powerful way, where you truly do take your power back in, in your speech. You may start with the power of the mind, right? which then translates into the power that comes out of your mouth, which is your speech. Um, so this could be a very powerful time of you um, evolving your communication and speaking style into something very, very powerful. You'll get the opportunity for that. Um, but it could also be some kind of... Um, because it's a Mercury retrograde and this is a communication house, there could be some miscommunications. So throughout October there may be some missing pieces of information, miscommunication, or literally missed communication. As you use Scorpio's uh, investigative powers uh, to look at things, you may have some missing pieces. Um, rely on your intuition, which is high for everybody at this time, to maybe source out where that pieces of information are and always do a double check. I mean, that applies to all signs. Mercury retrograde can cause communication problems, but it doesn't have to. Um, so that's what I would say for you, but it's, it's positive in the sense that it's, it's a, a sextile. 
Now, you could start communicating with your, um, your siblings for some reason, and this could be um, over issues to do with death, um, power, anything psychological or hidden. There may be some discussions around those, and they don't have to be a negative thing. Um, but there may be some things that need to come to the surface there with your siblings that um, kind of brings stuff to the surface and has everyone breathing more easily. Now, your neighborhood could also be involved here, where, you know, Scorpio is the underworld, so it could be literally, um, I don't know, digging up power lines. <laughs> um, yeah, so it could be something in your neighborhood has to be put down. Yeah, it could be something like literally um, communication lines have to be put down in your neighborhood. That's kind of a mundane standpoint, but it could be. Um, but certainly you're going to be using this time to develop that powerful speech. And uh, that's something to really look forward to. Where people can now trust you. So we're going to end with Libra. Remember that Mercury does go retrograde and then goes direct at around 25 degrees of Libra. So Libra, this is your second house. And because we've got the Mercury retrograde, if you do have something at 25 degrees of Libra, 24, 25, or 26 degrees of Libra, when this Mercury retrograde goes forward and, or direct, it's going to be significant for you, especially in terms of really bringing some hidden things to light. You know, this is also skeletons coming out of the closet for all signs. Now, your second house is value. So I have a feeling that this is really going to be tied in with some major um, reconsideration of how you value yourself, how you value others, the value of your money. You may go and negotiate a better a value of ourselves and you have that translated into getting more money for what you do as work. But at its highest level, this is you taking your power back and trusting your own self with regards to valuing yourself and seeing who values you. Does that measure up to your opinion of how you value yourself? Trust whatever that is. Intuition is going to be super strong right now, and you're going to know. So if there's some people that need to be let go because they're not valuing, let them go. If a job that you're in isn't valuing you, well, negotiate for a higher raise or change where you're actually working. It may also involve love to some extent as well. Now with Scorpio, love is that obsessive compulsive thing. Now it can be... Scorpio can go to the depths of love. It would die for love. That's the Scorpio, um, you know, view of love. So when we talk about love, you could meet somebody too during this retrograde period that you feel a very deep connection with. But they may also have power over you. Um, so you need to be maybe a little bit discriminatory as well. And maybe wait till the beginnings of November before you make any major decisions or move with regards to your love life. Okay, well I'm going to end there. I've covered all the signs and given you, I think, a good understanding of what's going on. But I'm just going to leave it with, um, remember this is a time for you to trust that you need to take back your power and be comfortable in that. Okay. You deserve to own your own power. And maybe as a collective, we need to learn that too. Well, I wish everybody good luck. Keep me posted on how this plays out for you. I would be very interested. You can also post early, if you like, on what happened during that uh, Venus retrograde, uh, because you're going to have some resolution with the Mercury retrograde in October 2020. I will talk to everybody once again for my October video. Take care, everyone. Lots of love. And believe in yourself. Take your power back. Trust that. <laughs>